it's too many women who get pregnant by the same man around the same time in short spans for me to believe this. If she claims to be your friend, like, how do you know, like, oh, she's trying to take my man? If a man tell me she not your friend, I don't ask no questions. I start making arrangements. I start shuffling some pieces around. If 33% of those men are actually being taken, then that means still over half of the men are not leaving their wife. Mm -hmm. That means over 67% of those men are still committed to their relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we're focusing on the numbers of the 50% 50, 50 of women, but that 33% is not a high success rate. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scared to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. I have a special guest in the house. She's no stranger to the platform. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Paradise Paris. How are you doing this evening? Oh, good, Sean. It's always good to see you co mingle with you and bounce ideas and conversational pieces. For sure, because, you know, I had to uh, hit you up on this topic because I need your feedback on this. <laughs> I took it from you. <laughs> this... I <took> from you. <laughs> I know, right? It's all good. This, this topic, uh, I don't know their name off the top of my head. I don't know if Maybe you can help me with that. I can't remember their names. I do not know their names. I had actually never saw them before. Yeah, this is new. But we're going to jump into this. Now, in this reel that I saw, this guy was saying that 50% of women admitted they tried to take another woman's man. <laughs> what, what were your thoughts when you seen this video, first of all? Uh, I think that that's correct. Talk to I think me. that the numbers actually could also perpetually be higher. Like, um, it's it's no secret that a lot of times the way we are finding each other is under someone else. So, with that being said, um, of course, people people are deceptive to get what they want. You have no way of gauging if that man was actually in a committed relationship or not, aside from his word. If you moved in and you did like, and I don't mean like physically moved into a house, but moved into a situation with him and you guys just happened to fall into something permanent. Mm -hmm. But most times, even when people are dating, you don't know if that's somebody else's man. You really don't know. Because we're in an era where accessibility vindicates people to have who they want to have. Like it makes them feel like they have more options or that they are more valuable, more worthy to um, explore and take their time before settling down. And we're supplementing people and outsourcing people to fill a variety of voids, which is why. Dating multiple people and not putting all your eggs in one back basket is, you know, heavily discussed. But in actuality, you see way too many women who argue over men. <laughs> you see way too many women who um, discuss their experiences behind men to have any type of assertion, whether it was intentionally or unintentionally, to know if a woman actually was dealing with a man that was single, single. It's very difficult to know that unless he is very adamant about it, unless he, you know, is very, he, he's able to show you things that shows like, I know this was a single man. And and again, you really have no idea. Mm. So you think the numbers are higher? I do. I mean, they're... If well, Sean, I know you're married, but if you review, like, just objectively speaking, as a married individual, sit back and think about how many people say they're keeping their options open, and then they are still attached to their ex. Their ex still has accessibility to them. 
So if I'm dealing with my ex who has a form of an emotional attachment to me as well as an entitlement, and then I'm also dealing with and bonding with, let's just say four other people, how single am I really? That's not single. Because I'm practicing how to be in a relationship with one of them. And I'm utilizing previous tools and I'm I'm you going off familiarity to deal with my ex. There is no way a man who was formerly in a relationship with me can come to me now and tell me he's not going to treat me the same way that I expect to be treated when we, we were together. Absolutely not. So even if we agree we're not together, I still expect certain things. I still expect to give on my birthday. I still expect Valentine's Day when we go out. I still expect for you to cover the bill. You may not give that to other women who just interested in you. You may not even take her outside. But you may say you're single. We're not playing. You're single. And I bet not see you with nobody else when we together. It bet not be your phone ringing out. You know, there's a certain level of respect that integrates that when you're dealing with your ex a lot uh, imagine how many people say i always have this one ex that i can call on for anything i do not believe people are actually practicing monogamy the way that they claim that they want it there is no way you can wake up one day and go i want a 40-year marriage but you're used to getting everything supplemented that you need mm -hmm. from six different people how are you going to be able to sacrifice and invest into that one person? It, it's easier for you to just navigate amongst six, six different people. It may start off with commitment. It may start off with loyalty. But eventually, you're going to revert back to your default setting, which is, I'm not getting this new event. Let me go get it somewhere else. And it's not just a man thing. It's a woman thing, too. We're not practicing monogamy. So, yes, I absolutely believe more women than they know about because you know you do have some women that are simply innocent but you have some that are not but it's too many women who get pregnant by the same man around the same time in short spans for me to believe this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the babies are a keen example of it and it's very common today it's really normal it's normal so what do we say here You're coming out the gate swinging. Oh, my God. And in the video, he said that 50%, he said of the 50%, he said one third of the women are successful. are successful. What do you say to, and I guess I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but since we're here, we got to talk about it. Like, how do you know that some other that your friend can possibly be after your man. Like, how how do you spot this type of of woman, if you will, kind of throwing up my air quotes, if she claims to be your friend? Like, how do you know, like, oh, she's trying to take my man? This is going to sound crazy. <laughs> and um, it probably will make women guard it. The best way you can know is watch your man and ask your man. He going to tell you. He is going to tell you. <laughs> it's never failed me. If two people in my life have been very correct on who is my friend and who's not, it's always been my mama and my man. For women, I can't speak for men. But for women, my mama know and my man know. And I promise you, if a man tell me she not your friend, I don't ask no questions. I start making arrangements. I start shuffling some pieces around. Mm -hmm. Because typically, mm -hmm. if you look at, well, let me speak for myself personally. The character of the type of man that I like, that I'm romantically interested in, mm -hmm. they don't really align themselves in the gossip. You know, they don't, they're not chatty patty. They're not really keen into getting into women's business they like that's her friend cool that's her friend you know it's like she means nothing to me and then they they meet and they're you know in passing 
He's not trying to formulate a relationship with her or he's not trying to put himself in proximity of what I have going on with my female friends. Like he respects my friendships and that's done. Mm -hmm. But if he ever come tell me that's not your friend, I'm going to start looking crazy because what he know that I don't know, you know, and I never go and I now as an older woman, I never to go and pry no more. I used to pry, you know, I used to ask questions like, why you say that? Because, you know, we women and we gullible and, you know, sometimes we, women, he said, it is my friend, <laughs> you know, we get a little defensive, but now I know better because I had two different men tell me that's not your friend. And they were not wrong. They were not wrong. Wow. So I feel like if a woman is trying to see the puck close home girl, Want her man? If if he genuinely don't want that woman, this is one thing. He mm -hmm. if he genuinely does not want that woman, mm -hmm. and he genuinely has good intentions behind his woman, he'll tell you. Mm -hmm. He gonna say it. So you're saying that the friend uh, make this advance? Oh, absolutely. And then if he's if he's truly committed to you, because I want to talk about that uh, a little later, I want to save that for later. If he's truly committed to you, then he's going to tell you this. Your girl is not really your your girl. He will. And again, you have to be very discerning about the type of man that you have, because we know that there are some men who just like chaos, right? Mm -hmm. um, you will have a man who get caught cheating, and it's her homegirl who told it, and then he, she ain't even your friend. It's like, no, no, you're not gonna get out of this one. But on a situation where, you know, like, you typically, let's just say your man is a cheater, mm -hmm. but you know his type. And you have been able to speak to the interactions and the dynamics of him and your homegirl. Let's just say he don't really care for her like that. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your man can be a male gigolo. He can be very much so charismatic and, you know, very suave. But for some reason, she don't, she don't do it for him. He's genuinely nice to her, but that's about it. He's trying to remove himself from the situation. And you watching how she may engage. Whether she's, you know, completely, you know, interested or not, she could be completely acting as if she's playing her part. She don't like him. If, if he mentions it, again, you have to know your man. But if he mentions it, men typically don't engage and stuff like that. That's not the norm unless he's really messy he's in his immature phase or he he just like chaos mm -hmm. they don't talk about stuff like that especially with more times often than not men who have uh, a habit of cheating mm -hmm. and they know that they have a woman that they're not trying to let go mm -hmm. they typically try to control what's happening around her before they get it out of their control mm. so yeah. Mm. yeah do you think those type of women prefer married men or men in committed relationships does it make a difference or is it just that she's just like i'm going to take any man that's just in a relationship like does it make yeah, a difference it does make a difference because okay. you have to be able to understand the level of what what a woman is willing to commit to and just because she will go after a guy in a boyfriend girlfriend dynamic don't mean she's willing to deal with a married man and i can say that from experience mm. i honor marriage i value marriage and you know um a lot of people go well you're not you're not you're not you're single until you're married mm. you know a lot of people do have that type of mentality I used to have that mentality until I got older and I realized, wait a minute, you got to start practicing marriage before you get into marriage. So from experience, I have dealt with women's boyfriends, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to really just be able to discern like 
again, what the woman's motives are, like what her intentions are, because a lot of times you don't know. And I, I say this all the time to women. They get mad when I say I'm pro side chick because she didn't go and invite herself into that situation. If it's a burglar in my house, you know, like they don't get there because you open the door and let them in, right? They, they came with the intention of stealing. And if you don't do things in order to secure your premise, then you helped. You helped. Them. But as far as like the side chick thing, I always tell women like, how are you mad at a person who never gave you no commitment? And the women response is, well, she's a woman. She hurt me and she knows how this feels or as a woman. And it's like, my gender is not, uh, it's not equivalent to what I feel about you. You're thinking that I went into this with some type of malice against you. It wasn't about you. I wanted what I wanted. So you can't say, oh, I went and dealt with your man to spite you. This is your ego. Mm -hmm. You can't say my looks have anything to do with what I need from your man. This is, again, your ego. All of this is about what you deem to qualify that makes you feel like could have potentially made your relationship suffer when you come to attack me. You shouldn't be coming to attack me regardless because the purpose of me being here literally had nothing to do with you. Even if I knew about you, I made the decision even knowing about you, it had nothing to do with you. It had more to do with what I wanted out of the scenario. And what we know about mistresses, they, they're known for the whole gold digger or the hush money and stuff like that. But the game has changed significantly. Mm. And sometimes women just want a companion. You know, like at a certain age, maybe it's your boyfriend is going to give me nice stuff. And I don't care. Maybe it's that. Or maybe it's, you know what? Husbands are less messy. They don't have as many women to run around. Or mm -hmm. the idea that having the boyfriend is a easier opportunity for graduation to this spot. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of nuances that go into it. And I'm just speaking from a woman's perspective. Mm -hmm. You can't necessarily pinpoint why a woman decides to deal with whatever type of man whether he's married whether he's a fiance whether he's single you don't know and we also fail to take into account their history there are some women who's just been tucked in the back she's been there for a long time she just seen other women come and go and again, you thinking it's got everything to do with you or her trying to hurt you and you trying to minimize her. But I mean, if she'd been there through three or four different girlfriends, then you sure it's just about you? You get me? Yeah, my, yeah, I'm just listening. And this is why I had to have you on the show because I'm just like, this, I've heard of it before. Yeah. But to get so many uh, comments and so many people feeling like offended, it's just like, OK, well, this this is probably a real thing then, you know, because when people get offended, you like, oh, OK, well, if the shoe fit, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> Let me ask you this. If another woman can take a, another woman's man or boyfriend, husband, uh, was he really hers to begin with? Possibly, because men don't do that the same way as women. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I always say this, right? Because the approach is different. We got to be very specific about that. Like when a woman goes to approach a man, her intentions really may not be to take your man. Mm -hmm. Her intentions are probably just to enjoy your man. So if she took your man, mm -hmm. he probably wanted to go. Because we've seen time and time again, like the, the, the tale is as old as times. A married man can have a woman on the side, but you know he ain't leaving his wife. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So you didn't take her man, right? Mm-hmm. It's very few far in between. The, the study said 33%. I didn't even go and do the research. I didn't look it up yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But look, using their numbers, if 33% of those men are actually being taken, then that means still over half of the men are not leaving their walk. Mm-hmm. That means over 66, 67% of those men are still committed to their relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think we're focusing on the numbers of the 50, 50% of women, but that 33% is not a high success rate. It's not. Yeah. So if you're talking about a man being with a woman and then he gets with his mistress, then that means only after divorce and everything, only after 33% are beat. And then we know you're <laughs> dating the married coach. Second time around marriages do not last long. That's true. So you got an even higher divorce rate here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looking at it, when you're talking numbers, it doesn't align to say this is something that's prosperous. Looking at the numbers, it doesn't align to say if you take this route, you will have success. Mm-hmm. But again, when you're talking about a man taking a, a woman from another man versus a woman taking a man from another woman, mm-hmm. the approach is very different because when a woman goes to deal with another man, she's intentionally searching for something, searching for something specific. Mm-hmm. When a man goes and deals with somebody else's other woman more times after than not he just looking to kill time Hmm. he looking to release a form of of like and that's what a lot of women enjoy about being having the side chick position i can get all of the amenities of being the girlfriend Hmm. and give him the girlfriend experience but i never have to do anything else I never have to actually care for him when he's sick. Mm-hmm. I never have to be the person to he's going to rely on when he he's having downtime. I never have to be the person that comes through for him if he needs something. Mm-hmm. I'm not that for him. I'm his fantasy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he enjoys me. We don't argue. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So the intention yeah. is much more different. Now, will she extend herself? She may. When she starts to catch feelings of this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But even in these situations where you're talking about a man going after a woman that's already invested into another man, mm-hmm. the the approach and the attention is totally different. And there are a lot of caveats that go into that because, again, we, we won't deny the fact that we've seen it. Mm-hmm. You know, Snap is a whole show about how women are using their current lovers to set up their husbands. So it's not like it's, you know, it doesn't happen, but I will say it's not under the guise that women take the measures to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the the side chick can be scary for, for most men because he's willing to be like, oh, so you're telling me you're not gonna break up my happy home? It's like, he's like in between like oh shoot like I'm, i really want to take this chance i really want to gamble and and lose everything because this woman is willing to just be this little section of my life opposed to you know her possibly uh uh blowing up my spot or whatever i've known guys who was just like oh shoot she she don't really she don't want to destroy my marriage yeah it, it's it's just that much more tempting yeah. You know, um, especially yeah, uh, in today's culture. That's what we look at, like when we look at men versus women, like I'm chaotic. I'm a chaotic individual. <laughs> so and this is not something that I have done, mm-hmm. but I can honestly say as a woman, if you put that power in my hands, you better be careful with me. Mm-hmm. And this is why I, again, like, I can't necessarily blame 
the woman who was invited into the situation. You invited her in that. Mm -hmm. You took the opportunity for that uncontrolled variable as a man. So you ran this risk. You go explain it to her. I don't care. And I'm very adamant about, I don't care. This was about me. This was, what, this was about what I wanted. It is not my responsibility to adhere to her emotions. It's yours. Mm -hmm. And it's also your responsibility to adhere to mine. Mm -hmm. So if one of us are too irrational and too uncontrolled, you better pick your poison. But I have watched where some men go, I got to sit back and I got to see this. Does she play her part? And, and that's actually what um, I had a situation with a guy and I was really coming out of a long term situation. It was long term. It was very unhealthy. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, I did not know that he was involved with a woman. I been involved with her for years. Mm -hmm. Like they were really together. Mm -hmm. And um, I told him, I said, well, if I find out we're done. Mm -hmm. And he was like, just like that, we're done. Well, I found out maybe about six months later, it was very um, unexpected. I found out it was literally just scrolling, mm -hmm. just so hard to see. I'm like, this baby looks familiar. Who child is? I know this child. Who the baby with? And well, I go click on the picture who the baby with. The baby was with mama. And I started looking and I'm like, Ooh, some of this stuff adding up. Some of these times when I said I was trying to be here and you said you was here and she was here and, huh, you know, so it added up. And then later on, we ended up having a conversation about it. And um, he lied, but he was like, I genuinely thought that you knew. And I was like, no, I didn't know because I had already made you aware if I knew. And I wasn't going to deal with you. And he was like, well, one of the things that I respect about you, even after you found out, you didn't go bothering her. You played your part. You you still respected that. He was like, you know, I know I messed up, but I, I respect it because you knew you handled your own as a lady. And you could have. Mm -hmm. You know, I had tons of evidence and stuff like that. But that doesn't do anything for me. Because I have a relationship with you. I don't have a relationship with her. And that's why I never understand stand the whole concept of going to a woman as a woman. Yeah. But I will say for men, if you want to go take another another man's woman, more times often than not, even if he hurt, he probably going to let you have her. Mm -hmm. He probably going to let you have her. It, even if he decides he wants to put up a fight or something like that, He'll probably bow out, especially if he watches how she responds. Mm -hmm. Because you guys understand this man ain't here for no reason. Women have a very difficult time understanding this woman not here for no reason. I'm one of the women where I get that. Yeah. I don't ask why her. I ask, what's your relationship to her? Hmm. How did you meet her? How long has she been around? I start asking them questions because that's going to tell me something. As a, as a woman who has had long-standing intimate relationships with men that were, that were situationships mm -hmm. where there was, you know, a girlfriend here and she was hit and miss or there was, you know, a situation here and we picked up where we left off and we, you know, time time severed i start asking them type of questions because i know the type of relationships i done had with men and so what makes me so special to assume that if i were to be in that situation that other woman probably didn't have that same type of scenario with you how do i know she's not your high school sweetheart how do i know that you know you and her didn't talk in college and y'all, you know, fell off for a couple years and y'all vibed and you may have messed around a time or two, but it never really went nowhere. And then how do I know? Life happens. Mm -hmm. But I will say for me, I always tell people, you can't hurt my feelings with my man. 
I know what type of man I got. I'm not insecure about it. So if a woman came into the picture, you can't come to me as no woman. Your best bet is to handle whatever grievances you got with him. Because coming to me, you're not going to get the answer you're looking for. Mm. So, so where does that confidence come from? Because every woman don't think like that. For one, again, it, it comes from my experiences with men. I grew up around a lot of boys. Mm-hmm. I grew up around a lot of boys. Mm-hmm. But I also had my own relationships with those guys, you know, like, or like my, my high school sweetheart. It Whatever girl he did, what I knew about it. Mm-hmm. it. It was never a thing where I could overhear somebody talking his business and it wasn't, we had that type of bond. And it was kind of strange when I think about it. I'm like, we, we, 15, 16, and we're mm-hmm. talking like this. Like, mm-hmm. I remember I had um came home from college and I was telling him about this guy, and I was like, I think that you know, this gonna be it. And um, uh, his response to me was, There, there should never be another man that make you feel like you can't talk to me. Mm. there should never be another man that make you feel like, you know, whatever you and I discuss or we have going on, it stops you from feeling like you should be able to say those things to me. Mm. The door was always opened. Mm -hmm. It's Mm. closed now for other reasons, Yeah, but nothing to do with another individual. So that sense of comfort came early on, early on, like, and that doesn't mean that I'm not, I wasn't insecure about other women. Because again, I dealt in a situation where, I mean, he had me going crazy about women. I'm talking about he, I couldn't keep up with how many women the man was sleeping with. But when I sat back and I thought about this, not the, these women did not do this. They did not do this. They chose to see what they wanted to see in that man that made them attracted to him to them. Same way I did. He was the problem. And it was one of the things where either you're gonna deal with him or you're not. Mm-hmm. And I chose to quit. I chose to bow out. There was no prize there. Mm -hmm. I had to get tired but then after that I realized like hey the real reward is knowing that they have resentment behind you not being around the real reward is knowing that I did what I was supposed to do I loved the way that I was supposed to love I gave them the support the encouragement the motivation and I I gave them everything that I could provide for them at that time in life Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't, you know, just wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that's heavy. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you. So is anybody safe? It's like. How, how, how can you secure the relationship? Because. People seeing this video and the statistics and stuff, it was almost as like the wild, wild west. It's like nobody's safe. <laughs> I mean, this may be a little controversial, but um, I think we 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 emphasize too much on monogamy and not enough on discipline. Mm. Can we you talk we, about that a little more. Yeah, we we focus so much on harping on monogamy. But what does that really mean, right? Mm -hmm. That means you wake up every day and you choose intentionally the same person, repetitiously. Rain, snow, sleet, or hell. Good, the bad, the ugly. That means when everybody around you financially up and you not, you still go choose that person. That means when everybody's succeeding, mm-hmm. 
and they're reaching all of their goals and they're ex executing to their highest potential, you not you discipline yourself to see what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. But that discipline has to be very intentional because if you go into something and you're telling another individual you're making a O. This is what I want to do with you. I want to do life with you. You're the only person I want to do this with. You have to be very intentional about honoring that discipline. But I think it starts in the beginning of understanding this has to be practiced. Because again, we're practicing dating multiple people. And don't put all your eggs in one basket in. We're practicing spitting a block. Mm -hmm. that's what we're practicing we're not practicing monogamy mm -hmm. and we're taking those things and we're telling people you can do this you can wake up one day and ask for a 40 year marriage and I'm sure you can execute it without ever being attracted to anybody else mm -hmm. that's a lie humans do not work that way but here's also the thing because we also have to stop lying and think that everything is the moment that you are betrayed. And we also have to stop holding people to an unhumane standard. Mm. You will be attracted to other people. You will want other people. Your eyes never stop working. And we conflate love with the desire of sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. We're humans. We don't work that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are two different things. Yeah. So could people be saved? Yes. But I will say this. It is the reason why swingers was a thing for older married people. It is the reason why that was something that existed. Now it's opened up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the purpose of it was for older married people mm -hmm. because they wanted the opportunity to have an open and honest bedroom experience but go home and live their life and love who they love. Mm -hmm. And once people start realizing you don't own people and you can be honest about what your sexual desires are and what your partner's sexual desires are, and you can start being a little bit more flexible. Maybe monogamy will be a healthy, long-term thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it is discipline. And you're talking about this to people in America. And we're we're not disciplined. So almost people wake up and quit their job at the strength of I don't feel like it today. <laughs> uh, how can I expect you to wake up and choose the same person over and over and over again when you can tell a person who was in one relationship for seven years, hey, that person probably wasn't for you, but the moment that they get somebody who challenges them to expand their mind and they're in a different level of maturity, they say, I ain't got to deal with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... <laughs> It takes work. It literally takes work. And you have to realize that people are investing. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to cash that check? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am because I know I'm going to get another one. I'm going to keep cash of mine. I keep cash of mine. I'm not afraid to fall in love. Yeah. I'm not afraid to try it again. I'm like you. We're going to keep doing it until we get it right. Mm -hmm. I, I hear you. And that's real because the one thing that one of the greatest compliments my wife ever gave me was, I remember one day we was just laying up in bed and she was like, you know, she was like, thank you for never bringing drama to our home. And I was like, damn, you know, like that meant a lot to me. And, I, and don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm human that I'm Lord knows I, I, I got issues. I'm, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Because I tell people when they get married, everybody don't get ugly when you marry. Like your your mar your wedding ring is not it doesn't give you superpowers. Yeah, you know when she told me that it gave me that much more confidence and like I really have to make sure that I'm protecting my home. I have to make sure that I safeguard this thing 
um, just as a man. And to, to, to think of that, to know that monogamy, like you said, it takes work. It takes commitment. It takes discipline. It, it, it takes everything. And we're kind of shifting away from monogamy, I see, to a degree. People were kind of more... I haven't actually honored monogamy. If I'm being honest, like, you can't tell me that you genuinely want monogamy when you don't even practice being single. The whole intention or premise of how you date is to explore multiple people, and you're self-righteous about it. You want to have this person for this or that person for that. And this is men and women. That's not monogamous. And you can't tell me as a human, you're going to wake up one day and go, oh, yeah, I know how to be fully committed to one person because you are not practicing that. You're not putting yourself in a routine for that. It will be very difficult. It will be far more challenging. And realistically speaking, when you talk about people's sexual desires, they have opened up and expanded so much to the point where you can't restrict a person to only your sexual desires you can't we have men who are bisexual in the moment that they tell a woman that she don't want him no more mm -hmm. she's afraid of him. she's ready to emasculate him she's ready to completely throw away whatever they had despite his feelings mm -hmm. And then we also have women who they want to be far more sexually promiscuous than what these men are into. But the moment that they tell them that they get very insecure, they get very shallow, they start calling her, you know, promiscuous and out of her name, things like that. But it's like, listen, the reality of it is what people are getting now, they're getting all of their needs met by multiple people. And if you feel like you want to be with somebody long term, either you're going to step up to the plate and make the investment or you're going to leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I've been married to my wife over six years now. I can barely keep up with her. I can't think of trying to keep up with another woman. I'm just like, Lord, I, I'm, I'm still working on the one that I have. But honestly, I will say this as a woman, as I've gotten older, I value my peace so much. Like, I never really liked drama. I never really liked having to fight over a man. Like, man, if if you can keep outside people from being the reason why we have conflict, you probably have me for life. <laughs> I swear, like, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I'm dedicated. I'm committed. I'm right here. As long as you don't call me on my name, put your hands on me, mm -hmm. and you won't ever make me feel like another woman is going to come bother me about you, mm -hmm. I ain't going nowhere. We locked in. Mm -hmm. So having that sense of peace and comfort in my home, people are always like, oh, it's it's a respectful way to cheat. Listen, there is no respect in cheating because you lied to me. You cheated me. You my partner. You my partner. Mm -hmm. you, you can't cheat me that way. There is no respectful way of cheating. Mm -hmm. But I will say there is simply you honoring my boundaries and respecting me when you understand my peace is important to me because when I'm by myself, I don't have no, no disruption in my home. Mm -hmm. So don't you feel like you can come and make the, you're not the exception to the rule for me having a disruption in my home. I don't care because we together and I don't care how many motherfucking bills you pay in here. Don't disrupt my household. If you're going to sleep with another woman, you're going to do that on your own time. But she better not come over here. Everybody going to have a problem fooling with me. And I mean it. And I don't mind. Mm -hmm. Hey, I hear you. I got one more question to ask you because we, we can keep this. We can keep this rolling. I want to respect your time. I know you're a busy woman. Do you believe some single women, uh, do you believe some women pursue men in marriage and relationships because there's a lack of qualified single men? Never. Okay. It's never been that way. <laughs> okay. Never been that way. Um, It's men in jail who got more time than anything. Our really, women really want us time and attention. Mm -hmm. It's never about filling the bed. It's never been about filling the bed. Mm -hmm. It's about what that woman desires at the moment. Single women are not going after 
men who are committed because there is a obscene number of men not available. Mm-hmm. No, that's <laughs> not a thing. It's it's it has more so to do with um how that woman has assessed her value and what she feel like she can have. I definitely feel like it's more so ego than anything. Then that's why you will hear women say, she must have low self-esteem. Or why she feel like she can't get nobody else, you know, because it's based on her ego. I think it's a person to person thing, but I can definitely tell you based off of why the woman went behind the man, what the premise of it was, if I knew the situation. But it has nothing to do with the lack of accessible men at all. Women have always went behind men who were taken. Mistresses is not a new thing. Escorts, not a new thing. What what was her motivation behind it? That's the question we need to be asking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess that can vary from, from woman to woman, maybe, huh? It yeah. will. Yeah. <sighs> okay, my mind is blown. <laughs> this oh my god this has been a phenomenal episode can you let everyone know how they <laughs> get in touch with you Paris oh they're gonna be getting in touch with me a lot next year <laughs> uh, <laughs> um of course my twitter mm-hmm. is underscore paradise Paris one my tiktok is underscore paradise Paris my facebook and my instagram is paradise Paris and my YouTube is just landed in Paris. The handle is also at underscore Paradise Parrots. And you can reach me for all business inquiries at contact.paradiseparrots at gmail.com. Mm. All right. And that was just for maybe the, the, the 10 people who don't know who you are. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you got this thing on lock. So, you know, I just thought maybe for a couple of people who didn't know. Uh, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, if you're watching this via YouTube. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure uh, you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, even on Spotify. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, In doing so, it'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? We gave away a free Amazon gift card not so long ago. So, uh, yeah, so leave those rating and reviews. We'd love to hear from you. Give us an honest review. You know, people say, hey, I have to give me my five stars. Let me know how I'm doing. So talk to your boy. This is Sean Heineman with special guests. Paradise Paris. Hey. All right, Brave Arts community. Take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.